Okay, so now we're up to book two, and our main character in book two changes. It is no longer centered on Despero. It's centered on a rat, and his name, his full name, is Kiroscuro, spelled with C-H, because it's not in English. And Roscuro is his middle, uh, not his middle name, his shortened nickname. So, oh, it peeled off. So... Um, I'll try and hold this up, but... Hmm. Okay, well, this is not going as planned, but that's okay. So, anyway, i just put this, put this on. That's okay. So, let's see if it sticks better to my seal. There we go. So, Roscuro is a rat. And some of the traits, he loves light. He doesn't behave like a normal rat, similar, very similar in a lot of ways to a mouse that we just read about who doesn't behave like a normal mouse. So he loves light, which is not very typical of a rat. Um, he's not excited to torture prisoners, which most rats take like really seriously. They really love it. Um, he was born a few years before Despero, which is just some important information so that you know he's a little older than Despero. Um, and he's named after light and dark. Kiroscuro means the, um, the contrast or the, the differences between light and dark. And it was as a joke. So already we can see that Despero's parents and Roscuro's parents are very similar. They don't particularly care for Roscuro. No parent who cares for their child is going to name their child something as a joke. It doesn't make any sense. So they name him, they have like a, rats have like a special sense of humor. They named him Light and Dark because rats don't like light. So as a joke, they called him Light and Dark, Kiroscuro, Roscuro for short. Um, and his first, our first kind of action encounter with Roscuro is that he um, has his whisk whiskers burned off by Gregory because he was nibbling and chewing on Gregory's rope. And the rope helps Gregory to not be lost in the dungeon. So Gregory needs that rope. And when he asks Roscuro to apologize for chewing on that rope, Roscuro says no. So Gregory, as out of spite and out of anger, burns off some of his whiskers, those long hairs that hang off of his face. So he burns off those whiskers. But instead of being afraid... Roscuro falls in love with the light from the match. He's watching that light and he just can't close his eyes. He's captivated. He's in love with this light. He's so interested in it, which other rats are not usually interested in. So he kind of fell in love with the match, that, that burning, that bright. Um, but is it told? he's told by other rats, particularly his mentor, that light is not the meaning of life. So... Roscuro is so in love with this light that he thinks that it's the center of the universe. But other rats inform him, absolutely not, it's not the center of the universe. It's actually suffering that's the center of the universe. Because rats love to torture prisoners and you're a rat. And rats like to torture people, so you're going to make people suffer. And you'll figure out how exciting that is. Um, and to be very honest, Roscuro is not that interested in torturing people. But he does it because he's told to. So a new prisoner comes in, Roscuro ro walks over to him, and he notices he's got this red cloth covering him, almost like a tablecloth. And this prisoner confesses to Roscuro that he had sold his daughter for the cloth that was around him, this red tablecloth, it's blood red, um, a chicken and a couple of cigarettes. And he actually didn't go to jail for selling his kid. He actually went to jail because he stole cows. So... His real crime, selling his own daughter, wasn't punished. It was a crime of, of stealing a cow that was punished. So Roscuro, in order to torture this guy, takes his cloth, rips the tablecloth from his hands, and runs through the bars of the jail, and the guy can't get his cloth back, and he starts to cry. And Roscuro brings it back to his nest, and he's not really impressed. He doesn't want the cloth. He wants the light. And he sees that the dungeon, the dungeon door opens, and it lets in that light. And he says to himself, you know what? 
I have to go upstairs. I have to leave the dungeon and I have to go into the castle. I have to see what light is about. I need to know if it really is the center of the universe. And so he does. So Roscuro leaves and he finds the castle incredible. He sees it the same way that Despero does. He sees the beautiful light that, that shimmers off of these polished floors. He sees the gold ceilings of the castle and these beautiful windows and the light, the sunlight streaming in. And he says, wow, I have been missing out my whole life. This is where it's at. This is where I need to be. And boom, he stumbles upon a party. And everybody's having this delicious soup. So he climbs up onto a chandelier. He tries to look over, slips, falls into the queen's soup. He pops up out, says the soup is delicious, queen, which he's not supposed to do. You're not supposed to speak to a human. It's a little different for rats, though, because we notice that they torture humans and speak to them that way. So in the mouse world, you're not supposed to talk to humans. But in the rat world, it seems to be okay. So he says to the queen, thank you for having me. Thanks for the soup. And the queen is so shocked that there's a, this, this disgusting rat in her soup that she faints. <laughs> and actually, instead of fainting, actually has a heart attack and dies right there. She's just disgusted. <coughs> Excuse me, my throat is a little dry. Just disgusted from by this rat. It's just disgusting to her. And she faints. Uh, faints and actually she has a heart attack, really. It's, it's not really said, but we can assume has a heart attack and dies. Um, and P, as, as this rat is running, running for his life out of this ballroom where the party was, and they're trying to help the queen, but they can't, he looks back to see Princess P, who is looking at him with this hate in her eyes for, for ruining this party and killing her mother, and he says right then and there, if this beautiful, light-struck girl who glitters in her dress looks like the sun hates me, then I hate light, and I will, I will take revenge on this girl. And that's the first time that we hear about this revenge that Roscuro wants to take on, it seems like, everything that's in the light, and particularly Princess P, because she has this kind of light around her. She glitters, and she's beautiful. She's the most beautiful princess, so she has this glow, and he decides to take his revenge on her. And this is the point where Roscuro takes the gold spoon. So now he has a red cloth and a gold spoon. The queen's gold spoon from her soup and the red cloth from the prisoner as his kind of souvenirs. And he's wearing that gold spoon as a hat. And this is the point where the king decides to make soup, anything to do with soup, spoons, talking about soup, kettles, anything, and rats, illegal. And he does this not because he's crazy, but because he's so sad that his wife, who he loved more than anything else, passes away, that the only thing that he can think to do is outlaw the things that he feels killed her, which are which is a rat and the soup that reminds him of her. So that was book two, right there. That's our that's our kind of summary of book two, a quick eight nine minute summary, and. Uh, I want you guys to really take notice of the two things that Roscuro has right now. He has a red cloth that he's keeping, and he has a gold spoon as a hat. And these things will come into play in the next chapter. And you know what else is going to come into play? This prisoner. Important guy. Why? Because who was sold... For a red hen, uh, for a red cloth, a hen, and a couple of cigarettes. Who else put Midri Sow by her father? So we have just made the discovery, and you wouldn't have known this by book two, but by book three, you make this discovery that this prisoner, who has a hen, a couple of cigarettes, and a um, red tablecloth, and who sold his daughter, must be Midri Sow's or Midri Sow's. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Father. Must be Midri Sow's father. Because he has those things and sold his daughter, and Midri Sow was sold by her father for those things. So we now know that the prisoner that Roscuro is torturing is actually Midri's father. Is the, the man who sold his daughter to a man who beats her every day. So, kind of deserved. But... That is the overview of book two. Remember, Midgery is not in this book yet. This is just the, the note that this prisoner we're going to learn in the next chapter is in fact 
Majori's father. All right? So that's that. That's the entirety of book two. And I will see you guys for book three.